Getting to Know Hedis, presented by Alexis. I created this PowerPoint. Basically, um, my goal for this PowerPoint is to inform those who are new to the Hedis industry to provide them with key points and history surrounding Hedis. Hedis. Hedis stands for Health, Effectiveness, Data, Information Set. Please keep that in mind if you are new to the industry. Um, that is going to be one of the questions that your interviewer will ask you um, what it stands for. If you're abstracting um, for seasonal project um, positions, um, that will be also on your test um, in order to proceed to the next level. So please keep that in mind. HEDIS was established to encourage Medicare Advantage plans to provide quality care and overall quality care for their patients. Um, back in 2010, health reform law authorized Medicare to pay plans bonuses in the beginning of 2012. Um, well, the entire 2012 year, if they receive a four or five star on the program's um, five star quality rating system. And built on that provision, the Center of Medicare and Medicaid Services, which is CMS, subsequently launched a demonstration that allowed more plans to receive bonuses and increase the size of the bonuses to encourage the plans to maintain or improve their ratings. Um, the health plans now these days do desire the highest possible rating to be more attractive to the consumers and there are incentives to the star ratings as well. So if you get a four or five star, you will be paid higher than um, health plans or providers who receive a 3.5 or less. Um, health plans who receive five stars um, will be able to enroll and market to the Medicare beneficiaries throughout the entire year. So they actually have a privilege if they receive a four or five star. Um, any person, anybody that is um, 65 years and older Medicare beneficiaries who needs to enroll into a health plan, if they receive, if the health plan receives a four or five, um, they can enroll the patients inside their health plans before it's open enrollment. So that's basically what that means. Health insurers are held responsible for services, um, for the service levels to their members through the National Committee of Quality Assurance, which is NCQA, um, HEDIS quality measures. HEDIS is a tool used by the health plans, as I stated before, to evaluate their performance on many aspects of their services. HEDIS consists of several measures across um, different domains of care, and health plans are able to determine, determine the percentage of their member populations that are compliant with specific treatments protocol, such as ongoing activities to ma manage di diabetes, or any other chronic conditions. The HEDIS measures also guide health plans in the adoption of best practices for preventive care, such as ensuring that children are receiving recommended immunizations at, at the proper care, uh, proper age. Sorry about that. Um, I'm not going to speak on children measures at the time. I'm only speaking on um, Medicare beneficiaries. So those are personnel who are 65 years of age and older or who has disabilities. National Committee for Quality Assurance, better known as NCQA. NCQA is a private nonprofit organization that is dedicated to basically improving healthcare quality. It was founded in 1990 and has been a central figure in driving improvement through, throughout the healthcare systems. Um, it's one of the top, top, top in um, the country of the national on the national national agenda as well. Um, everyone plays a major role in the healthcare industry. I just need to let you guys know that um, quality healthcare belongs to the entire healthcare team. So 
That means the patients, the doctors, the front desk, everyone plays a major role. And they, everyone plays a role in making NCQA successful and the healthcare industry is successful as well. Um, health plans play a significant role, however, um, because they ensure that the patient's treatments, the drug therapies, and the preventive care measures are handled in a timely, thorough, efficient, and attentive manner. The, the health plans have the ability to deliver high level of services, and it doesn't only impact the reputation, um, it, it impacts everyone. So it's very competitive, competitive, and the measures for HEDIS determines um, the level of performance and incentives the plan will receive from CMS, which is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. So as I stated before, the patient has a significant role um, to help the health plan's reputation. So um, just keep that in mind as well. 2017 through 2018, heat is quality measures. The year is almost over. Well, the year is over. So we're going to just elaborate on 2018 heat is quality measures for beneficiaries, Medicare beneficiaries. So that's patients who are 65 years of age and older or has disabilities. So the first measure that we're going to speak on is ABA, which is um, having the BMI documented. Um, the age bracket is adults between the ages of 18 through 74 who had an outpatient visit in the past two years and must have had their body mass index documented. Um, quick note. Documenting just the height and weight does not meet the requirements and you will be deemed for it. It will be a non-compliant chase. Um, the only exclusion for BMI is if the patient is pregnant. So only pregnant women will be excluded from this measure and it must be within the past two years. So I say every time the patient comes in, make sure that the MAs, the nurses are doing vitals and documenting the BMI every visit. You cannot lose that way. You cannot lose. Breast cancer screening. This measure is for women between the ages of 50 to 74. Um, the patient must have a breast mammogram or a digital breast tomosynthesis on or before um, October 1st, 2015 through December 31st of 2017. If you're speaking on 2018 year, then it must be between October 1st, 2016, between December 31st of 2018. The only exclusions for 2018, the patient um, must be 65 years of age and lives in an older living long-term institutional setting or must have a bilateral mastectomy. Also um, exclusions for 2017 through 18, the bilateral mastectomy. If the patient does not have a bilateral mastectomy, it will be non-compliant. The patient must have bilateral, keyword bilateral. If the patient still has one breast, the patient must go and get a mammogram or any of the screenings listed on this PowerPoint. PSA-based screening for older men. Men ages 70 and older screen for prostate cancer. Um, the exclusions for this measure are prostate cancer diagnosis, dysplasia diagnosis. If the patient had a PSA test during the year prior, to the measurement year of 2017 or if it's 2018 um, where the laboratory data states that there is an elevated um, lab result of PSA test or if the patient has a dispensed prescription for a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor during the measurement year. This is self-explanatory. Um, if they don't have any of the exclusions listed in red, then the patient must be um, screened for prostate cancer. And that's just a lab work um, that the patient should be getting um, annually. 
Colorectal screening. Adult ages 50 to 75 must have one or more of the following screenings. Colonoscopy in the past 10 years, flexible sigmoidoscopy in the past five years, CT colonography in the, five, in the past five years, fit DNA tests in the past three years, fecal occult blood tests, which is FOBT annually. Um, I would say the FOBT is probably the easiest way to get the patients compliant. Um, only thing is they have to do it yearly, but it's a quick test where you give the patients a stool card. They go home, use the rest, the number two um, on the card, and they send it back. The easiest thing to do. Um, but a lot of patients um, are non-compliant and the healthcare plans and the providers fail this measure often. Um, the only exclusion for colorectal screening is a diagnosis of colorectal cancer or a total co colonectomy. Use of spirometry testing in the assessment and diagnosis of COPD. This measure is for adults ages 40 and older um, with a new diagnosis of or newly active COPD and a spirometry testing to confirm the diagnosis. So if the provider is just now um, diagnosing the patient with COPD, they must have a confirmed diagnosis. So he needs to do a spirometry testing on that patient that he's diagnosing the COPD on. Pharmacotherapy management of COPD exasperation. This measure is for adults age 40 and older. Members discharged from an inpatient admission or an ED encounter with a primary diagnosis of COPD who were dispensed both a sy systemic corticosteroid within 14 days of the event, a bronchodilator within 30 days of the event. Statin therapy for patients with cardiovascular disease. This measure is for males ages 21 to 75 and females ages 40 to 75. The patient who has been identified as having clinical cardiovascular disease and has met the following criteria. The patient must have two rates reported. They must have the received statin therapy, which is members who were dispensed at least one high or moderate intensity statin medication during the measurement year. Secondly, a statin adherence of 80%. The member who remains on a high moderate intensity statin medication for at least 80% of the treatment period. CBP, controlling high blood pressure. This measure is for adults ages 18 through 85 with a diagnosis of hypertension or diabetes prior to June 30th of 2017 or if we're in the 2018 um, year. The most recent blood pressure reading in the medical record for 2017 or 2018 and has inadequate control identified as um, if the patient is between the ages of 18 to 59 must be less than 140 over 90, ages 60 through 85 with a diagnosis of diabetes less than 140 over 90, ages 60 to 85 without a diagnosis of diabetes, um, the range should be 150 over 90, less than 150 over 90. All the exclusions um, for this measure includes evidence of any of the following during 2017, end-stage renal disease, kidney transplant, or dialysis. If the patient is on dialysis, then the patient will be excluded from CBP measure. Um, if the patient is pregnant and if the patient um, is at a non-acute inpatient admission, then the patient will be excluded from the CBP measure. When it says non-acute inpatient admission, meaning if the patient is going to have an EKG or an outpatient procedure or something like that and, and is not um, admitted to the hospital, then the patient is worried. So the patient blood pressure is going to be high and nine times out of 10, they call it white coat syndrome. So we cannot take a blood pressure when the patient is worried because the blood pressure is going to be high. So we cannot um, take that measure, take that value for the CBP measure. So again, the exclusions are 
if the patient has end-stage renal disease, a kidney transplant, or is on dialysis. If the patient is pregnant, and if the patient is at a non-acute inpatient admission. CDC, Comprehensive Diabetes Care. This is for patients the ages between 18 to 75 with diabetes type 1 or 2. Um, so the screening and test of care that's needed for a CDC is a A1C testing, a hemoglobin A1C, not hemoglobin alone. Um, a lot of nurses or heat specialists used to get confused on the A1C testing is not hemoglobin alone. It has to be hemoglobin A1C testing. And it must be the most recent date and result from 2017. If we're in the 2017 year or if it's 2018, it must be from 2018. You have to do an A1C yearly and it must be controlled. Anything over nine is non-controlled, non-compliant, poor control. So the A1C must be less than nine. Second, the patient must receive a retinal eye exam, most recent date and result from 2017 or 18. If we're into 2017 year, then it has to be from 2016 or 2017. If the patient goes to the eye provider and it's 2016 and we're in the 2017 year, then it must state that the patient has no evidence of retinopathy. If it does have evidence of retinopathy, then the patient must go to get in di get a dilated retinopathy eye exam the same year. Um, third, medical attention for nephropathy. Um, the patient must have one of the following during the current year. Nephropathy screening or monitoring tests, ACE and R therapy, or evidence of nephropathy. So the evidence of nephropathy includes ESRD, CKD, kidney transplant. Nephropathy screening is basically a microalbumin, which is urine, um, and you can get that when the patient comes in. That is really easy to get. And nine times out of 10, if the patient is a diabetic or have hypertension, then the provider has already prescribed the patient in ACE and ARP. So, the patient could be really compliant with this measure. It's just how you manage it. Um, lastly, the patient must have a blood pressure, most recent, um, 140 over 90. Less than 140 over 90 is controlled. So um, if the patient is not 140 over, less than 140 over 90, then the blood pressure needs to be redraw, uh, retaken, I'm sorry, um, the same day. And you actually can crisscross the diastolic and systolic. So um, keep that in mind as well. Um, the only exclusions for this measure is members without a diagnosis of diabetes, but with either a gestational diabetes. So that's if the patients are pregnant or if it's a steroid induced diabetes. Um, if the patient is on corticosteroids, um, sometimes the A1C is elevated and it produces them to have diabetes. Those are the only exclusions. Okay, so those are the only um, measures that I'm going to speak on in this PowerPoint. However, you can continue to watch my channel to see all the new videos that I upload. I've attached a pop quiz so you guys can locate um, compliant measures for the year 2018. So on the next slide, I will give you a progress note and I need you to basically locate the compliant measures. Let's see if you learned anything. Great, awesome, you guys did good. I know you did good. Let's see, there are five compliant measures on um, that progress note. You have the CDC CBP, which is the value of 138 over 85 with a hypertension diagnosis of 5-1-2015. You have the CDC eye exam, which in the patient went to the eye exam and received the DRE um, on January 4th of 2016, which had no evidence of retinopathy. CDC attention to nephropathy, the patient is on in ACE and ARP, so that's the ACE and ARP um, therapy. 
And then the COL, the patient had a flex sig on January 4th of 2016, and then a statin for cardio. The patient has um, atherosclerosis of the aorta and hypertension, and the patient is also on a statin, which is an ACE and R. And the patient is um, there for the visit for a refill. So you guys did good. I know you did.